I am program manager at IFA, and I'm very happy today to uh, talk to you about the preliminary findings of the IFA Digit project uh, to understand a little bit better what's the asthma and COPD patient digital journey. So maybe just a little bit of an introduction for those of you who do not know IFA. IFA is the European Federation of Allergy and Airways Disease Patients Association. We have 42 members and uh, present in 25 European countries. So we are the voice of over 200 millions of people living with allergy and airways disease in Europe. Um, so I, will, I wanted to give you kind of, uh, let's say, uh, what are digitalization, what is digitalization and some definitions, but since skills already did it before and in a very, uh, let's say, a fancier and uh, more, um, appealing way, I would just keep and just to, to tell you some, some words on what digital health is and e health and M health, uh, just, to, just to make sure that we are on the same page uh, for, for the rest, for the rest of, of the presentation. So now digitalization, uh, we know, so the world is undergoing a digital uh, revolution is already in, it will never stop. Uh, especially in the last year, uh, we, we, really, we really saw the importance of implementing and providing digital services uh, for, for patients. Uh, now, patients will benefit from digitalization from so many, so many levels. Uh, for diagnosis, we know that, especially for COPD and uh, asthma patients, one of the major clinical concerns is uh, uh, mis mis misdiagnosis. So, uh, digitalization can support. Uh, researchers to better identify the underlying disease mechanisms and really to lead uh, to specific treatments and uh, precision and personalized medicine. Uh, on the treatment level, digital solutions such as apps or wearable can help increasing adherence, which we know, especially for long duration treatment for chronic disease can be particularly challenging. But this adherence is also crucial to improve the quality of life. So digital tools can enable behavioral change and driving the shift from a disease center to a patient-centered healthcare. Um, digitalization will, can also improve self-management. So digital tools can help monitoring risk factors that can lead to exacerbation, especially for respiratory conditions with strong interlinkages with the external um, environment. Uh, but digital tools can also bring new approaches to new way of communicate with healthcare providers. And that will enable patients to become partners of the healthcare providers rather than just care receivers. Now, digitalization is very, very, I have to say, it's, it's important and we, we see it because the, um, the European Commission, so the creation of the European data space is one of the priorities of the, uh, of the European Commission. Uh, and it also includes health sector. So a common European health data space will promote a better exchange and access to a different types of health data, such as electronic health data, genomics data, or patient registries, um, not only to support the healthcare delivery or the so-called primary use of data, but also to support health research and health policy making, uh, so-called secondary use of data. So to, to, to stay on the EU level, let's say on the European level, um, you may know that IFA together with other um, patients as patient group at the European level and healthcare professionals uh, formed in 2020, the European Lung Health Group. So uh, digitalization is also one of the four thematic work stream for um, the European Health, uh, Lung Health Group together with the air quality, tobacco, cessation, medicine development, safety, and digital health. Um, so the, the European Lung Health Group developed a vision for 2020 to 2030 um, that encompassed five uh, pillars, uh, raise awareness of respiratory disease, promote prevention, enable access to care, advance research, and draw the lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic. So these are the long-term, let's say, priority areas. Then, as I said, digital health is one of the priority for the work stream for the next, uh, for the next two, two years. 
So when the European Commission opened uh, the consultation on the European um, health data space, as IFA, we also align our position with the uh, European Lung Health Group to, um, to answer to, to this consultation. So in uh, July, when the consultation closed, we, um, we submitted our response. So I'm not going to too much in details of the consultation. You can find our uh, responses in, uh, in our website. That is also the, the, um, the link available in this, in this presentation, in these slides. Uh, what is, I think it's important to underline here, that's the process that led IFA to uh, respond to, uh, to this consultation. So uh, as usual, we gather inputs and insights from our, from our members uh, to, to understand better the, their views on, uh, on digitalization in, uh, uh, for allergy respiratory uh, um, patients. But now, for the first time, we had the possibilities to include in our response some uh, evidence uh, from the DIGIT project that we just uh, received because uh, we, the, the survey has just, um, has just finished and we have just received the first funding. So we really had some evidence uh, to strengthen our position and to really, uh, let's say, um, to bring forward the patient's need uh, and patient's view on, on digitalization, not only our members, but a larger, a larger community. Now, I'm very happy to talk to you about now the DIGIT project. So in 2021, IFA um, is implementing this project called DIGIT. What is it? Uh, the aim of the project is to improve the understanding and the confidence also for people with asthma and COPD uh, in the digital health space, to become aware of their rights and possibilities, but also to build the trust uh, of patients towards digitalization, digital tools and digital solutions for health. Um, so one of the main activity of the DIGIT project uh, was um, a survey that we conducted um, in five countries in Europe. So we interviewed 970 asthma and COPD patients from uh, five countries, from Belgium, Czech Republic, Ireland, Norway, and Spain. Uh, we developed a questionnaire, quite extensive, uh, almost 50 questions on the access and the use of digital health services uh, for diagnosis, for treatment, for care, but also to, to understand patients' view on the use and sharing of health data and also the empowerment coming from uh, digitalization. The objective of the survey was to understand the digital needs, the perception and the use of asthma and COPD patients uh, to gather insights on the asthma and COPD patient digital journey. We wanted to understand, identify the existing gaps in accessing digital solutions but also the potential biases such as age, socioeconomic status, education, digital literacy. Um, we also um, wanted to understand a little bit more and let's say from an empiric point of view, uh, the impact of the COVID crisis, because yes, we felt it, we know, but how uh, the patients really um, have been impacted by, uh, by the pandemic. So does the pandemic um, have an impact on the use and perception of digital solutions in healthcare? So uh, we, as I said, we just received the very first fundings of the, of the survey because the field work, so the, interviewed, the interviews um, have been finalized uh, in end of July. So, and last, last week we received the, um, the, the results of the, of the survey. So I'm very happy now to share with you the preliminary funding, some highlights of what uh, emerged from the, from the survey. So um, the use of, the general, of general digital tools, uh, such as internet, internet or social media or streaming platform is quite high among participants, especially among asthma patients. But if we look at the use of e-health, m-health, uh, it's comparatively low uh, if we consider the use of general digital tools. Um, and even if those um, solutions are used, they are 
often, they're often limited to simple and non-disease related services and tools. Uh, regarding the COVID pandemic, uh, it in, indeed increased the use of digital services. And this, I think, is something that we all experience. We are using more uh, computer, mobile phone to, to get in touch with our dear one or for, or to, for, for, for basic services. Uh, but what, uh, let's say, what I think is very interesting here to see is that there are also signs of a more positive attitude towards digitalization. Uh, the pandemic has also boosted the use of e-health and m-health, especially for video consultations, booking appointments, and uh, e-prescription. Um, so the results overall show that there is a general openness towards digital health services um, among, among our patients um, for COPD and asthma patients. But still, we need to uh, ask uh, as a question, so why the use of e-health and ML is low if this openness is, is there? I mean, patients want to use that. So we identified several barriers to uh, the use of digital health and data. The first one, and really the most prominent one, is the lack of awareness. Patients do not know that services are available. Um, they do not know that some tools exist. Um, and the other uh, important reason is a lack of availability of digital solutions. So even if the patients know about that, they do not have access because those uh, solutions, those tools are not available because their healthcare providers, the healthcare professionals do not provide this kind of services. And this is especially uh, true, and the survey, the results uh, show that um, for um, the, um, the specialist level of healthcare uh, providers. Uh, another barrier to uh, the use of digital health and data is the fear of losing the human contact. This is very, very important. It is really emerged from the results. Um, patients do not want to lose the human contact if they fear that digital tools can isolate them. Um, the other concern is about the misuse of data, especially for privacy and uh, security reasons. But we also identify some drivers that for, for the use of digital, tool, um, digital tools. Um, among them, it's the better disease management. So as I said before, self-management can really improve, can really benefit from, uh, from digitalization. And also the, the, there is a willingness to say to sharing data to improve their own conditions, but also for the greater good, let's say, for better treatment and research outcomes. Now, what happens now with this result? So as I said before, these are the preliminary findings. We are now in the phase of uh, drafting the report which will contain also some um, recommendations. Uh, the, 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 the report will be published in the last quarter of the year, together with a set of survey uh, countries fact sheets. So for each country that have been uh, surveyed, let's say, we will prepare some fact sheets. So our intention, so we really are hope also, is that the report and the fact sheet will represent some powerful tool for patients representative to advocate for a fair and uh, better access to digital solutions. Um, so building on the report um, and on the, re on the recommendations, we will also draft a charter for asthma and COPD digital care. What's this charter for? It's a charter for right of patients to have um, for the, the use of data for uh, the, the collection, data collection, the fair use um, that will be, um, let's say, will be used uh, as a, a tool uh, of, let's say, of discussion with um, researchers and um, app, app developer. We want to make sure that at the very beginning of the design, also at the, des the design phase of an app, 
um, developers, a researcher will take into consideration the, uh, the needs and the views of, uh, of patients. And that's the, our, um, let's say the, the last goal, the, the final goal of this digit project is really to have this charter and to use it as a powerful tool. Um, and then for next year, we, we already are planning some dissemination activities for, uh, for the results, for the report, and especially for, for the charter. So this is a bit of in a nutshell, what the DIGIT project is. So stay tuned because of course, by the end of the year, we, we will publish the, 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 the final report with the, the, all the results and also uh, the, 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 fact sheets, uh, the fact sheets country. Um, for every information that you, you might need, I'm available. Also my colleagues at IFA, we are available for, for any, I don't know, doubts or questions that you might have. And uh, yeah, check the, our website because soon we will publish all the results. And uh, so thank you very much for, for today. <laughs>